And I think with blues fans, because we're a working class, a working class club with a with that kind of background, you don't have to be a world class player as long as you fight for the badge and you run and you put the yeah, tackles yeah. in, yeah. you work hard. You'll always win over the blues fans with that sort of level of dedication. So welcome back to Small Eath Alliance FC. And this is one player that we hear spoken about on the terraces of St Andrews at Nighthead Park the most. It's Janino Bakuna. And in this video, we're going to discuss Janino Bakuna. I'm going to go straight over to Matt and ask Matt, what do you think about Janino Bakuna as a player for the Birmingham City team? So for me, Bakuna is so frustrating to watch. He's clearly a really talented player. He's flary. He's creative. He can open the channels up. He's good at set pieces on his day. But those days... You never know which Bakuna is going to turn up, do you? You know, as I say, sometimes he's world class, and the next minute he's given the ball away. We've lost possession. And how many games have we been at where he's either did a really sloppy pass, or he's come off off the bench and he's given the ball away, and the opposition have, have have gone and scored? And me and you have referenced this one on previous videos, but Carrow Road was a classic example at Norwich. He came on off the bench. What was it? Five minutes in, sloppy ball. They go up the other end and score, and it completely changed the momentum of the game. And me and you sit in the tilt, and, and it's so funny hearing other people's opinions yeah. around because. You know, we we hear we hear it all in the stands, don't we? And there's a couple of fans who really love him and cheer him on. And there's a couple of fans who literally can't stand him and work <laughs> and, and really he really winds them up yeah. because he always seems to try and do the complicated thing, doesn't he? But yeah. I'm on the fence a little bit with Bakuna. As I say, sometimes he he's really a great player, can change the game, but then sometimes he's, he's so frustrating. I think he's similar. To, I think me and you have spoken about this as well. Similar to Dembele. Yes, definitely. In yeah. that context of you know, definitely can open the game up, definitely can change games, but also on the other hand, can can change it for the negative when they give the ball away too much. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and this is the thing, and you you know, you know, use the term there, on the fence. And virtually mm. every Blues fan that you speak to about Janine Bakuna, that is what they say, you know, that they... that they. I think there's no doubt, absolutely no doubt in the world that Janine Bakuna is a good player going oh. forward, OK? He, 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 you know, I mean, some of the things he did against Brazil... Uh, Brazil, it was like Brazil. Against Black, <laughs> I think it, it, was like, it was like Blackburn, but it was yeah, like yeah. he was playing for Brazil. He was doing all sorts <laughs> of fantastic stuff. And when he does it, and it... Gets, it's, it gets done. It looks absolutely brilliant. Mm. But the problem is, is when he's closed down and loses the ball, because I've got a theory about these type of players in that, you know, that they're, they're very positive and they make a massive impact on the team in a positive way when they go forward. But if you're a player that does that and you do good things, but then you sort of balance it out by giving the ball away, everything you've done good is evened out in a negative way and mm. therefore you're becoming a neutral player. So that's what frustrates me about Janine Bakuna. But I think that, you know, we looked at the, the, I mean, I can think of loads of good goals he scored. I mean, the last season away at Hull City, um, outside the box, top corner, mm. or, or, you know, top, top of the net. Yeah. Uh, the, we were behind the goal at the bet 365 at Stoke when he yeah, scored yeah. that free kick. Yeah, so, yeah. Sheffield Wednesday, outside the box. Yeah, yeah. so he, sc he scores some great goals. But yeah. um, uh, so I don't think anybody in the Blues fan base would doubt his ability going forward. But I, I think you're right. I think that the worry is when he's in the team, that, that he's going to make those mistakes that result in goals. And we've seen it happen time on yeah. time. But what impressed me the most this season is his ability to get stuck in. And, you know, at the start of the season, we were definitely struggling for right backs and we were struggling on that right hand side. And he chipped in, he did his right back shifts. And me and you were uh, at the Bristol City game away and, and Ethan Laird went off at half time. And Bakuna had to fill mm. in at right back. And he did a cracking job. I think there's no doubt about it. He wears his heart on his sleeve. You know, he, he he's a dedicated player. He gets stuck in. He, he he puts the shift in. I mean, some fans will argue sometimes he doesn't track back well enough and he's a little bit lazy in yeah. that context. But I think actually he does put the hard work in. And I think with Blues fans, because we're a working class a working class club with a with that kind of background, you don't have to be a world class player as long as you fight for the badge and you run and you put the yeah, tackles in, yeah. you work hard. You'll always win over the Blues fans with that sort of level of dedication. And I think Bakuna to me this season, he has shown he's willing to play in other positions. He gives his all. I, I feel like he's gave his all on the pitch minus a couple of performances. But for me, it's just that letting himself down sometimes when he's given the ball away. And sometimes it's not like you know if someone does a trick. And it, it it pays off, and you go and score a goal. You think brilliant, but sometimes there's no need to even do the trick. Just play the, just lay the ball yeah, off, play do, the pass, do, do the simple there's stuff. No yeah. Need, and there's two old blokes that sit behind us. They must be in their seventies or eighties. They scream at Bakuna every single game. 
I, I won't repeat it on this because we're not a swearing podcast, but you know, they're, they're bleeping. Pass the mm. ball, do the basics. And yeah. I totally, I can totally understand that why it would be, it's frustrating yeah. to watch Bakuna from time to time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you two guys are watching this, I wouldn't clash you as old. I, <laughs> I think uh, senior is probably uh, a better, a better, a better description. Um, but, but I, but I agree with Bakuna. And actually, if you look at his, um, I agree with you about Bakuna. Uh, if you look at his stats, he's uh, scored five and assisted five goals this season, which, which is not a bad output. Mm. Um, I think Mowbray as well is using him more and more now as, a, as an impact substitute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did play the full 90 against Sheffield Wednesday, uh, but uh, you know, he has had an impact when he came on for, uh, against Blackburn. Actually, he was heavily involved in, uh, heavily involved in the second goal, yeah. uh, which was a great goal, actually, against um, Sunderland, where quick thinking, free kick you know, to, to Stansfield, crossed it, and then Miyoshi scrambled the ball in. So, um, but, but to me, he's one of these players that, uh, that you know when he's going forward, you don't need to worry. OK, well, it's just that, that sometimes when he's closed down quickly, Quickly. It's almost like you're panicking as a Blues fan, thinking he's going to lose this because he tries to overplay. And it's almost as you know, he'll try and take it around one player two or three times that I think is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, from my point of view, uh, I think, again, as I've said, I can't criticise him as a forward uh, moving player, he do, you know he does yeah. get in good positions. He does score good goals, and he has got real, real natural skills that a lot of our players haven't got. Mm -hmm. It's just the the possibility that that he could lose the ball, and he does lose the ball, and it does lead to goals. Unfortunately, yeah. I think he does a lot behind the scenes as well. You know, in terms of like morale and energy, I feel like. Um, John Eustace was was quoted saying, you know, the kid has got he brings brilliant energy to training. He's yeah. al he's always got yeah. the, he's, he's always got the players laughing. Yeah. Tony Moby quoted last week saying he's mad as a hatter. Um, so I think behind closed doors, he's quite a popular player. I think people get on really well with him. I think he's quite funny. I think he brings a lot to the to the, to the training camp and, and gets that morale. He's a bit like Laird, you know, in, in the context of the players, not the crowd, rallies people up and, and gets sort of behind people. Um, but what's really interesting is and I'm not sure too sure how much truth there was behind this. This was just what I was reading on Twitter and social media was that. Um, was it a Turkish team came in for five million? I was just pounds. about to ask you about um, that, Fenerbahce. Yeah, Fenerbahce mm. came in for five million quid, um, and I think that's a <laughs> that's that that's such a, a big amount of money when you think about Stansfield's value, when you think about Drama's value. I, I believe Drama could be a, a free agent in the in the summer, but you know why not? If, it, if that was true, five million pounds is a lot of money. Me personally, I would personally take that and put that towards a prolific goal scorer, put it towards Stansfield, uh, especially at the moment because Mowbray's using him as an impact sub. We've got Dazal and we've got Pake who are filling that gap. Yeah. Um, and we've got Miyashi going forward. Uh, um, so we've got a lot of attacking. And Pritchard to come back. And Pritchard to come uh, who back. Could play, who would easily play that position. So as well. for me, five million quid for an impact sub. Well, that, that was my next question. I actually had a question for you. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to literally put you on the spot and you saved yourself that now because, uh, <laughs> because I was going to ask you, you know, would you have taken, we was talking to uh, a guy called Barry um, yesterday at the Sunderland match and we were talking about Bakuna. I hope, if you're watching Barry, hello. He asked us to give you a mention. I don't know your surname, sorry, but uh, you know who you are. He he but was talking Barry about... Barry from the Tilton. Barry from the Tilton, we'll call <laughs> you, yeah. He was saying that uh, you know we should have maybe taken the five million mm -hmm. for um, for Bakuna. You've just said you would as well. I would. And as as good as a player as he is going forward, I would have taken the five yeah. million as well. I think because um, it's because of that sort of the balance that of what we just spoken about and what he does when he loses the ball, mm -hmm. it negates his good stuff. And I think that could have been five million pounds that we could have had maybe to spend on uh, on other players. Not yeah. that not that I'm not still not happy still in the team because I think as an impact sub, I think he still can have a big part to play yeah. this season. But Definitely. And yeah. I think I think he's got better over time. I think you know last season you know he, he was giving the ball away a lot more. I think he has got more solid. I think he gives the way, ball away a lot less. And I feel like last la last year I was literally so frustrated. I was literally shouting, "Get him off! He's doing my head in." It's in last season. And I think this season I'm saying I'm saying that a little bit less. And I think he is getting better. He is progressing. But when you you have a market value of five million quid, for me personally, I yeah. I, I, I would put that more towards because we are crying for an actual prolific goal scorer in the team who can settle in and, and actually get us, you know, 15, 20, 20 plus goals a season in the championship. We're, we're crying out for something like that. And well, we, we, need, we need players in the squad where, you know, you're not worrying about what they're going to do from a negative perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, we want players we feel that are solid and that, uh, you know, can can play at both ends, which is exactly what Mowbray wants. Yeah. And I think that's the issue with uh, with Janine Bakuna. You know, I don't know any Blues fan won't argue with the, the goals he scores and the way he, you know, can, can attack as an attacking player. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just those extra bits of um, quality that uh, and thought when he's closed down and tackled on the ball that, mm. that unfortunately give away too many mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. But for me, Bakuna, very talented player, also very frustrating. I don't think he's quite 
in the higher end of the Championship or Premier League. I think he's a, a pretty solid mid-level Championship player. Mm. Um, and for me, if we get another offer of five million in the summer, especially because we're going to have such a huge reshuffle, yeah. personally, I would take that. It would be interesting though, just to fire you back a question: What would you do if we were offered sort of maybe one point five, two million? So it's obviously a lot less money, but there would be an, a, a potential offer there to get him off the books, wages, free up FFP, uh, uh, all, all, those, all those sorts of things. Uh, to answer that question, I think it's going to depend on what we do in the summer, uh, because obviously for him to go out of the team, then who's going to replace him? Yeah. So I'd, I'd need to, you know, in, if in order to decide whether you know you think one point five would be acceptable, um, it depends on bringing. I mean, if he brings, like, I mean, if Pritchard, for example, for the rest of the season, uh, you know, plays out of his skin, then you think, well, do we really need Janine mm. Bakuna? Because he could easily play in that position. Yeah. But uh, if that doesn't happen, and if we don't get players in that are um, better than Bakuna, yeah. then 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 probably not. It's, it's a bit frustrating, isn't it? I don't know what, what Blues fans actually think here. That um, you know, we obviously have our thoughts on Janine Bakuna. He's one of those enigmas of a player that you you sort of don't know what you're going to get with him sometimes. But as a forward moving player, as we've mentioned, we think that uh, you know he's a real positive impact on the team. Um, but if if Personally, if I feel that a player, I'm, I'm a bit sort of on the fence about it. I'm just wondering if, if he's exactly the type of player that we uh, would want moving forward. I'd love to know what you think. So would Matt. You know, give us your comments below. Let us know what you think about uh, Janine Bakuna, uh, whether you would keep him, uh, whether you would sell him, uh, and just any general thoughts you've got. Put Pop a comment below and let us know what you think. And... Um, uh, it'd be interesting to see what your views are. Uh, if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a uh, thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel for future content, don't forget to pr press that uh, subscribe button. And me and Matt will see you on the next video.